Hey, this is Jeffrey Kieser, and uh, I play keyboards and jazz piano. I'm sitting here in my hotel room in Pittsburgh between a couple of Chris Bodie gigs, and uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my new project called Mantra Echo, The Near Forever. It all started about a year ago when I found some old reel-to-reel -reel tapes I made in 1976 when I was five years old. Was learning how to program and play an ARP 2600 synthesizer that they had at the University in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where I grew up. I was fascinated from an early age with electronic sounds and things like the soundtrack from Star Wars and how they made those lasers and R2-D2 and all that kind of stuff. And also um, Close Encounters, Steven Spielberg's movie had just come out, so I was really into sci-fi and and all the movie soundtracks and John Williams and all that. So I, I had made these four track recordings on the ARP 2600 synthesizer and my dad dug those up and I went, hey, this would be a cool thing to make a record out of. So I, I sent those to my friend Mary Ann Shedd up in Vancouver, who I knew is a great producer and keyboard player, electronica whiz. And uh, it's a direction that I'm really interested in ever since I was a little kid. I, actually, the synthesizer is my first instrument before the piano. Some of you, most of you know me as a jazz pianist, but uh, before I ever did that, I was really into electronics and synthesizers and used to build them out of uh, those toy wooden blocks that kids have. I'd draw knobs and oscillators and slides and all those kind of things on them. Anyway, that's the sort of genesis for Mantra Echo. And then it's also kind of mixed with a lot of unused or alternate takes of instrument part, individual instrument parts from my new Grammy-nominated CD, Aurea. So uh, you'll hear a lot of that kind of stuff and uh, some pretty amazing beats and crazy things that Mary came up with on her own. A new direction for my fans, but for me, uh, a very old one and, and kind of going back to the source of my fascination with electronic music. So I hope you enjoy it. Thanks. So Jeffrey sent me some tracks um, through the internet of some tracks to possibly remix for him. And uh, the first track that uh, actually came to life was a track called Moving Air. Um, I was really into uh, some of the sounds that Moving Air had. I was looking to see what samples would fit together and uh, what really excited me was some of the bowed bass that he had and uh, the piano as well. He had a really beautiful, just moving uh, piano line. Uh, very simple and just very melodic. The song at the time really didn't have to be anything. We had no expectations and we weren't even really planning on making an album at the time. So. Um, I enjoyed the fact that there were really no expectations or limitations. We could just go wherever, wherever we wanted, really. And uh, there were lots of beautiful melodies um, that I wanted to try and capture, and just the subtleties of, uh, of some of Jeffrey's playing, and the others that played on it as well, uh, that I wanted to try and capture and to develop. The very next track that we did from there uh, turned out to be Caraphone. Um, which was a, a really interesting mix again, um, more on the electronica side. And I think that's a tune where you really see the contrast uh, between the two styles, yet yeah, similarities as well. I think you can kind of see, um, from my perspective, how they can work together, I think, and at the same time, how they are quite different. Interesting thing was we had never really been in the same room for that entire process and for the entire time. Um, so the only time that we were actually um, in the same room physically was when I handed Jeffrey the CD in uh, Washington of our finished product. So that was, a, that was a really great and nice feeling to see everything come full circle. The third track that we started working on for the Montreux Echo album turned out to be Chrysoglot. And Chrysoglot had this very, very beautiful lush uh, main hook. Uh, main piano hook that I base everything around and I really think um, it conjured up a lot of visuals for me um, but thinking about that visual aspect having the visual aspect to our music was really important and this is where uh, visual artist Benton C. Bainbridge uh, came into the picture. Hi I'm Benton C. Bainbridge video artist and ARP 2600 fan speaking to you from the Bronx. When Mary and Jeffrey asked me to shoot a video for Chris O'Glott, 
I hope to capture that lush contemplative feeling of the song in pictures. It was springtime, so I said to myself, what better place to shoot than New York Botanical Gardens? And but at the same time, I didn't really want it to feel too real. I wanted to create a sort of fantasy space. So I was looking at that time at pictures with the so-called planetoid effect. And I managed to find this lens online that captures a 360 degree view around the camera and went off to botanical gardens to shoot. I wanted to capture all the sunbathers and solace seekers, and, but I also wanted to create a sort of unreal or surreal kind of space. So I took advantage of that planetoid effect and did little tricks with it like sticking the lens up above my head and walking around the gardens and getting strange looks from people. But also the camera had a super speed slow-mo effect where I could shoot 10 times slow motion. So say one second would become 10 seconds of video time, of screen time. I was just really looking at all the different ways people enjoyed the gardens and took it all in. I also had this other agenda in my mind, which is that people, of course, think of the Bronx as this sort of, uh, you know, desolate urban area, which it hasn't been for some time. I've actually found that it's one of the most beautiful parts of New York City because one quarter of the area of the Bronx is actually parkland, and I happen to live in that part of the Bronx. I also wanted to capture a bit of the of the tempo of the Bronx, you know, the place where hip hop came from. It's interesting, I like the, the tempo of Chris O'Glot and didn't necessarily think about it at the time, but there is something about this neighborhood where people all kind of move a little bit slower, you know, at that uh, hip hop kind of tempo. And so capturing things in slow motion actually captures something about how I feel about this part of New York City. Thinking about the video design for the Monterey Echo live show, I really want the, the video to be both a movie in the sense of something that you could watch and lose yourself in, but also I want the, the video to just disappear and allow you to concentrate just on the musicianship happening on the stage right in front of you. At times you should be able to almost forget about the fact that the video is there and, and it should almost be more like lighting or um, sort of an abstract echo of the mood <laughs> um, that's coming from the music. Hopefully the video will dance on that line between a, a movie that you watch and just light that you know gives a mood to the room. Sort of like jazz musicians will take their solos or they'll comp behind other musicians. There are times when the role of uh, video should really be just to support the act on the stage and should be pretty ignorable, it should be almost subliminal in its effect. At other times though, the videos are so gorgeous, uh, they will take center stage and hopefully you'll, the audience will be able to lose themselves in these movies. It's sort of trading lines, if you will, with the live music between the picture and the sound. I look forward to seeing you at our show. Thanks.